half in the bag. I just don't know if anything could top this one. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Half in the Bag. Is I, it? What? Is it special? It's special. It, it really isn't anymore though. Oh, you're talking about Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's go around and say our first initial thoughts of the movie while we show you some clips of the trailer. Okay. Epic. All of it. The Rise of Skywalker is a terrific finale that is just stuffed with so much of everything. Action, adventure, answers, humor, heart, love, and grit. I spent the entire second half with tears in my eyes. A wonderful way to end the Skywalker story. I'm emotional, overwhelmed, surprised, shocked, and stunned. More than anything, I'm happy. Thanks for coming through one more time, Star Wars. Oh my God, I am absolutely blown away. I have never been so satisfied by a film. This is the end of an era and a franchise that has defined my life. And this did it justice in a way I, I didn't imagine it could. You will cry. Well, of course, those were tweets, initial tweets. From, not, not our tweets. Not our tweets. We from, didn't say any of those things, but people did say that. After the premiere of the glitz and glamour of the premiere, you're all revved up with excitement. The stars are there. The, and you want to get invited to future premieres. And that's the most important thing, Jay. Um, <laughs> although, although I will acknowledge it's possible uh, that is the actual thoughts of those pe people. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. You know, um, if you grew up with like vines, like like five second videos, <laughs> this is this is like a lot of vines just strung together. <laughs> it's a good way to describe it. Lots going on. Lots to talk about. I I think this is six decent movies that are just condensed into one rushed kind of sloppy mess. Where, where does the decent part come in then? I think I think if you actually took your time and let all of the shit they just keep throwing at you, like, let some of these plot elements breathe a bit. There's a scene where they introduce a, an old flame of Pose, and she's introduced in one scene, and then her character bit is resolved in the very next scene, and then she vanishes from the movie. That's kind of the whole movie, yeah. It's, it's like... It's like, uh, it's, the, the movie is like an outline for like three seasons of a TV show. Uh, the, the people that are raving about this movie, and I didn't hate it. There were some good parts. It's very complicated and it's hard to break down because so much is thrown at you. If you're easily manipulated, so much happens that you, your brain can't keep up. So much happens so quickly that you don't have time to think about it before it's moved on to like six other things. Yeah. You went to the bathroom at one point, you were gone for one minute, and you missed like 15 different <laughs> plot points. Chewbacca was kidnapped, blown up, and then he was alive again. I, and I saw him get blown up. <laughs> I knew he was gonna be alive because you see him and Lando flying the Falcon in the trailer. <laughs> but listen, can I talk about the elephant in the room? What is the elephant in the room? Is it The Last Jedi? That, that, that none of this... Matters? That this is not my fault. <laughs> No, every, any, any amount of hate that Star Wars has ever gotten in the last 10 years is all specifically your fault, Mike. Well, okay. <laughs> Mr. Plinkett had said J.J. Abrams would be great at directing Star Wars films. Way back in the day. Do you remember this? Yeah, Rich? I do remember that, okay. yes. You're seeing, in my opinion, where the prequels utterly failed, Star Trek excelled. Star Trek is really engaging. It's fun, adventurous, fast-paced. Heroes are heroes and villains are villains. And at the very least, you know what's happening. It's everything we did not get in the prequels. At no point were we completely bored and confused. Sorry, I can't lock on your signal. You're moving too fast. I can do that. I can do that. Take the gun. The black hole's expanding. We won't reach minimum safe distance if we don't leave immediately. Your Highness, with your permission, we're heading for a remote planet called Tatooine. It's in a system far beyond the reach of the trap.
In fact, J.J. Abrams should have directed the prequels, and George Lucas should have directed people to their seats in the theater. Uh, this was before the sequels. This was before Disney acquired Star Wars, yeah. space action, and emotions. And J.J. Abrams is good at both. He is not good at writing the stories that he directs. <laughs> that is absolutely true. So I wanted to clarify all that. The, 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 uh, the Force Awakens, written by Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote Empire, and then I think you wrote Jedi, You're too. You're a Jedi, yeah. Um, no one talks about that, though. They just talk about Empire, because yeah. that's the great one. Um, Lawrence Kasdan wrote, and he, well, here, write a new, oh, what do you want me to do? And the soft reboot. Oh, okay. You know, and then he wrote You're it. gonna just write the same story again? <laughs> I get paid to write the same script again? Okay. Uh, so then Lawrence Kasdan's out, um, and uh, then Ryan Johnson takes over, and we all know what happened there. But really, JJ- no, let's, let's be specific. Nothing happened there. Right. The, the Last Jedi was a big waste of time. And so it's, it feels like uh, The Rise of Skywalker is making up for that. It's trying to do things that the middle movie should have done. It's sprinting to the finish line. <laughs> Let's just get this fucking over with. It's the end of school. And, and that's, that's a big problem. Well, it's interesting because like The Last Jedi, it's like, oh, everything that was set up in The Force Awakens, none of it matters. Fuck it. And then this movie is like, oh, everything that happened in The Last Jedi, uh, none of it matters. Fuck it. And it's like, okay, this is like, uh, in, in, in years to come, this will be taught as an example of how not to plan a franchise. It will be directly contrasted with Marvel. <laughs> yes. Did J.J. Abrams spin straw into bronze? <laughs> you think? I, I think that's a good way to describe yeah. this, because yeah. he was given a big pile of straw with a... Uh, with those camel things piss all over it, right? Yeah. The, the things that ran through the casino. He was given a big pile of that straw, and uh, I think he spun it into bronze. Maybe. I think that's uh, fair. Maybe, uh, what's a lesser metal than bronze? I was gonna Copper? say, I don't want to give him that much credit, but it's, it's, it's a situation where, like, Aluminum. One Okay. It's not, it's, <laughs> no. you know what, it's not very fancy, but it's very practical and useful. <laughs> yes, it, it, it serves its purpose. And it can be recycled. <laughs> um, no, because, I mean, there's so much to talk about, and it's, we're going to go on tangents. Mess. I it's... just wanted to wrap up my this is not my fault thing, <laughs> because, because I, people have been... First of all, the idea that Mr. Plinkett saying J.J. Abrams would make a great director for Star Wars movies had absolutely no impact on J.J. Abrams being directed chose to direct The Force Awakens, okay? Zero. You don't, you don't know that. I guess I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I never said he should write it with the guy who wrote Batman versus Superman. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't they have grabbed literally anyone? J.J. Abrams has that, that, that sense of action and excitement and drama and stuff, but you just need a really good story yeah. to go with that. And of course, they looked at this movie how everyone in the world was going to be looking at it. It's, it's like politics, like split right down the middle. Some people, half people liked Last Jedi, half people didn't. And there were so, only so many things you could do. And like you said, they just started throwing everything in there to try and make it work for everybody. Well, and had, in the end, it becomes a giant mess. They had nothing. And so they had to establish everything and then have it pay off rather than rather than the series naturally leading up to something. And, and it was somebody's Brilliant idea. They said, oh, by the way, spoilers. From here on out, spoilers. Nobody's watching this unless they've seen the movie, yeah. so it doesn't matter. Is Rey a Skywalker? Is she a nobody? She's both. How about she's a Palpatine, <laughs> right? I can feel your anger. No, yeah, Someone you know said, oh, I, I who has force powers? The Skywalkers have force powers, who else? Oh, she's a Windu? Well, no. <laughs> I guess that wouldn't work. She's she's a Kayati Mundi? Uh, she's Kayati Mundi's daughter. I mean, she's got a little bit of a forehead, right? Uh, you're, you're making a, a sequel series of movies based on Star Wars. What do you do? You need to have a Jedi character, right? You need to have a young person who picks up a sword? We, we've gone through all this. You're treading water. Why wasn't... If, if, like like Star Wars? <laughs> if Rey was Palpatine's granddaughter, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that means that Palpatine had sex with a lady? That means Palpatine in, with his fucked up face, right? 
It wouldn't be pre-fucked up face. Anyways, my point is Palpatine's direct daughter who got killed, remember? Her and the husband were like stolen and they were stabbed. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't she poised to be Empress Palpatine? Because why, none of this was planned. Look, it's Lando. We've moved on. <laughs> like, like. Chewbacca's getting a medal. Shut up and we, watch. If we move fast enough, nobody will notice. <laughs> I mean, this yeah, is. Yeah, this is like, because I think we talked about that with Into Darkness. That was like the extreme example of. This is. Just this... keep the thing moving. This is, this is like Into Darkness times 100 in terms of just don't pay attention. We're, we're just going to keep moving. She's a nobody. Nobody liked that. She's a Skywalker and eh, too predictable. I guess she could be a Kenobi, but he was technically supposed to be celibate. That would have been a better tie-in is because they're making the Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Obi-Wan Kenobi in between, remember he left to be a hermit? Yeah. And we thought he was going to stay there for 60 years until he became Alec Guinness. Hello there. But I guess he went off, he's going to go off on a whole bunch of adventures and maybe Obi-Wan Kenobi loses his faith a little in the force and, and Jediism and, and has a wife. Don't you I, hear his voice in The Force Awakens briefly? So maybe that was the plan? Isn't isn't that less interesting, though, than if a bloodline is evil? Even though they already did that with Luke Skywalker. No. I am your father. Is she going to turn to the dark side or not? That's the movie. Yeah. I think the idea to bring Palpatine back probably came first before the idea to have Rey be related to him. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, we don't have Snoke. We don't have a villain for this this trilogy. Bring back Palpatine. It's all we got. He's got a he's got a jar full of Snokes. That was my first laugh in the that movie. That was the best thing. All, the, all these floating all the Snokes in a gigantic tank. He I made it. he literally made Snoke. <laughs> It's so dumb, but it, it's dumb in that like, well, what do we do? How do we tie any of this shit together or make any sense of it? They killed Snoke, Kylo Ren was a dipshit. You either bring in a new unseen Sith Lord for your final act or you just bite the bullet and you bring back Palpatine. Yeah. And as dumb as it is, it was the smart choice. Was it? Look, the smart choice would have been not to make the movies. <laughs> No, the plan smart everything choice out. would have been to plan it out yeah. extensively yes, from yes. the beginning. Look, I am thankful that Palpatine is back because I love Palpy and he gets pretty hammy towards the end. More than I was expecting him to. But, but... Less than I wanted him to, though. <laughs> That's true. It's kind of right in between. Kind of like yeah. the movie. Eh, we right also need to address the fact that Palpatine and Jedi was just a mere clone. He was? Yes. He died. Oh, but this movie, he's back. He's no. A, do they say he's the, a clone? Yes. In the, this movie? He says he's died many times. Yes. Oh. I think the real Palpatine lives on this spooky lightning planet in, in the thing, and he's been, he's like the Wizard of Oz. He's been pulling oh, the strings. M many Palpatines have existed that have died. See, this Actually, is the thing I where... A, I have a different interpretation. I think the real Palpatine is the conglomeration of thousands of all of the dead Siths. That's the consciousness that keeps going on into the new body. So why is he still in Palpatine's body in this? Because he survived the Death Star crash, <laughs> or so Ian no, McDermott that, that's, can play the that's part. That's point A, is that's why we thought Palpatine was living in the ruins of the Death Star with an Ewok that's true, death he cult. wasn't there. He wasn't there. Okay, no, he was on a right. completely different planet right. that was inaccessible because it, it had that, that red electric uh, like sp gas cloud. with. You but, know, his, you have, but he's all fucked up, though. His f eyes are pure white. His fingers are like burnt and missing. Th he has tubes in him. That pal the Palpatine with the white eyes that we see in this movie is super, super, super ancient being kept alive by tubes and chemicals. That's why he's, yes, so he's connected to that giant it's thing. It's the same body that survived the Death Star. No. It, the, the Palpatine on the Death Star was a clone of him. Because the Palpatine on the Death Star just vaporized. <laughs> why would he, why would the new Palpatine clone have burnt fingers? Because he- his, And look just like his a finger, real person. Because before he turned into Palpatine, he was just Chancellor Palpatine. No, Chancellor Palpatine must have been a clone of him. All along? Yeah, because they never called him Sidious. They called him Palpatine. Yeah. So Palpatine is, is the source of everything evil. The source of all Siths. Well, this is all horribly he uninteresting. Called, he he, he pro, in his younger days, 
thousand, two thousand years ago, he probably looked like Chancellor Palpatine. Okay. So he cloned himself, created a guy named Palpatine, Chancellor Palpatine, who then became Darth Sidious. Oh, okay. So you're saying the person we saw at the end of this movie, we technically have never seen before. Right. Oh. That's, that would be, that would suck. <laughs> yeah. Why, I, I, why there were no other Palpatines, I have no idea. Look, it's Maz Kanata! Because <laughs> that, that's their excuse for saying Palpatine died. It would have been better if, well, you know, you show Palpatine falling down and that, that big blue energy blast comes up and he's just like falling down. He has like a, a force bubble around him ah, and he lands in some corridor and oh, I've got to get out of here and he runs into a ship. That would have been more, more appropriate or better. You know what I mean? Would it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, you know, he doesn't have to even run around. I think he just survives the explosion and he's floating around for a bit before his henchmen pick him up. Leia survived space. No. Yeah. I mean, like, when we see the Death Star number two explode, like, it is completely obliterated. Yeah. Like, to the po and then there is so much wreckage down there. It's completely obliterated, yet you still got, like, the fucking hull of it on that planet. Even I know. though it was fucking atoms. Right. <laughs> At some point, I'm willing to look the other way. Well, sure, sure, but but it's that, fine. That that was a good reason to have him still be alive. I mean, he's powerful, he's yeah. strong. You know, either way, it negates Vader's sacrifice of throwing him down the pit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know, so but who cares anymore? Who gives a shit? I can't touch this. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Let me ask you a, a shocking question. Did, which one do you like better, The Last Jedi or this? Oh, this. That's a tough question. I don't know if I can answer it, especially after we just saw this one. It takes take some time. The, the Last why. Jedi, for all of its problems, at least it felt like it was trying to have themes, you know, about like real Luke versus everybody's sort of mythical idea of who Luke is. You don't need Luke Skywalker. And this is just like a bunch of garbage. This is just like a bunch of nonsense. Like, what can we do to salvage this? Yeah. And like overcompensating by having too much in it. Yeah. So I, I don't think either of them are particularly good, but I think Last Jedi is probably more interesting. For the, for the record, I'm, I'm not particularly in love with any of these. Well, that goes yeah. without saying, I think. Yeah. We, we've known that for a while. <laughs> I, I, would, I would probably lean towards Last Jedi at this point. Um, but I understand the position that uh, a Abrams and company were put in yeah. to try and satisfy the fan base, uh, satisfy those who didn't like Last Jedi, satisfy those who did, make their money. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem is you don't have, like we were saying, you don't have an overall plan. So you don't have an overall like core or like central kind of conflict for these characters. They're just winging it. Right. And so, like, I didn't feel anything right. for, like, Ray during this. I know a lot of people don't like Ray anyway, but, you know. Well, you're definitely not going to like this if you don't like Ray. If, if you're one of those diehard, like, I hate Ray because she's a Mary Sue. Here she's, like, healing wounds. She's like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It's like they double debt, like they're trolling the people that don't like Ray with this one. Was that the was that the thing that J.J. Abrams was referring to? Like, I'm introducing a new force power that's going to piss, piss some fans off. She uses more force powers in this than in the entire original trilogy combined. She's like doing everything. What, what is she training for so hard? And why is Leia training her? Because we got some leftover footage. The because they killed two. Luke. Yeah. Because they killed Luke. Yeah, you got to. Because everyone something. wants that training sequence. Yeah. It even looked like Dagobah. But like, yeah, Ray Ray healing people like. It's like, all right, uh, but then you get, you get super nerds and why well, didn't Obi-Wan? Well, that's, that's the thing, you, you introduce that. And I know they, the little baby Yoda does that on the Mandalorian in one scene. Yeah. So they're, they're connecting it with that. But yeah, introducing that opens a whole can of worms about why haven't the Jedi done this before and all this stuff. Yeah. Why haven't the Jedi ever run really fast before like they did in the beginning of the Phantom Menace? Exactly, there's things like that or, or Luke jumping really high in Empire. They jump high in this. They do, they do. Yeah, 
yeah. When they're on yeah, the waves are coming. I think that's the overall problem, though, is like the Jedi can can do anything, what? but rarely do. Why don't they do the mind trick more? Yeah. Why do they ever even bother with the laser sword? Why don't they just always pick everybody up and just slam them into the ground with their mind? Exactly. That's kind of the problem with the Jedi in general. Well, because all that all that stuff was never the heart of. No, story. it was it was all the background to the characters and the character drama, and this new series doesn't have that. I mean, there's there's some drama between uh, Kylo Ren and, and Rey, and I think that was the best part of the movie for me. Adam Driver has because I actually carried this franchise. Yeah. Adam Driver is a great actor. Um, I just got done watching Marriage Story. He's great in that. He's um, so good. You know what's amazing about Marriage Story? It stars Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, uh -huh. both actors in gigantic blockbuster franchises, and here they're doing this nice small little movie. The whole movie is them just talking in rooms. I thought we should talk. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to start. It's just them just smearing the screen with their acting chops. <laughs> and it's great. Especially Scarlett Johansson. She has oh, yeah. so many, like, extremely long like monologues. Yeah, that scene where she's talking to Laura Dern. This is an hour review of Marriage Story, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And Laura Dern, too. <laughs> Laura Dern's great. Oh, yeah, Holdo. Holdo, who they mention in this, and they're like, why don't we do that maneuver that Holdo did? And they're like, uh, ignore that. <laughs> it's, too, it's too risky. It's a, it's a one in a million shot. We, we can't do it again because the movie has to happen. I don't know. And it was like, <laughs> it's like an 80-yard line. It's like they thought of it later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a as they say. That's a one in a million shot. It'll never work. Yeah. Why not? And then the movie keeps going. Yeah. But anyway, Marriage Story. <laughs> it's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Adam Driver is, is so good, and I, I I I can see people complaining in this about the scene where he's talking to Harrison Ford, because it's like, what's Harrison Ford? Is he's not a Force ghost? He's getting make taking it way too literal. That was a great scene too. It was a good scene, even though Harrison Ford looked like he just rolled out of bed. He refused to get his hair cut. <laughs> I ain't cutting my hair. I'll do the fucking scene, but yeah. I'm not cutting my hair. You, you, your hair is like really long, and you look like a bum. <laughs> it looks much. Can you worse. at least shave? Yeah. No. No. I'll do the fucking scene. They had to call in some major favors to get him on set. <laughs> um, but you know, he, Harrison Ford sold it, and uh, Adam Driver. I mean, he's, his, yeah, his he's turn. the closest the series has to any sort of like real character drama. Him and him and Ray gone and, fly, and flipped sides, you know. Ray Ray became the I'm the bad guy and he's I'm the good guy. He, she does the thing where she like see little moments like that are what stand out. What doesn't stand out is it's just surrounded the, by the bombardment of, yes. of nonsensical action yeah. and keeping the plot moving. And then and there's then, like sixteen set pieces. Well, yes, and and all the stupid little things that 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 I mean they're not stupid, but they're little things that are just they you could tell they went back. And, 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 oh, how does Ray heal him? Mm -hmm. oh, that's going to be weird. Let's have a scene where a giant snake, you An know. An inconsequential monster and, and, that she just heals. Okay, and then um, uh, Carrie Russell, you know. Oh, by the way, I have this magical coin that will give you access to anything in the First Order. <laughs> she just has it. Oh, take it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's going to come up later. And it, it's like, okay, well, how do we get him on the ship? Uh well, how about we go back 15 scenes to when Carrie Russell's talking to uh, uh, Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac. Um, and, and she just gives it to him, gives him this thing. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. It's like going back and they're just like throwing shit here and there. And oh, it's, it happens so fast, no one knows. Carrie Russell, all we saw was her eyes. Were you actually allowed to like make the pew pew sounds when you were firing blasters? I've actually been told in movies, we can see your mouth making it. <laughs> Was, was she even in the film? You know why she was in the film? Because she was on a show with J.J. Abrams called, 20 years called ago. Called Felicity, and J.J. Abrams says, hey, why don't you be this stupid part in this movie? You're a known <laughs> actress. You'll work for four days, yeah. and I'll write in your contract that you get 0.5% of the back end, <laughs> and you're going to make seven to nine million dollars by being a main character in this film and doing nothing. Yeah. What's the same with wink, uh, wink, my friend Carrie Russell? You're playing Zori Bliss, <laughs> like an utterly pointless character. <laughs> well, it's the same with Dominic Moynihan, who shows he has like one line in this movie. He was on Lost, with, that J.J. Abrams produced. I'm in it a little bit. Blink and you'll miss me is the name of my character. I'm very excited. 
He's in the Lord of the Rings movies. He's one of the main characters, and here he's like out of focus in the background. The little uh, planet that they go to where she was introduced, I kind of like that, the way they're like sneaking around with it. Like it looks like a little like village during World War II. Oh yeah, no, that was the, the implication. Trailer. I know, it's Nazis snowing. But we gotta rush through it. We got exactly. to do. Like, we got I so wanna... much to do. We got so much to do. Just get through as quick as possible. Spend some time here, let it play out. Remember scenes? <laughs> Like, and the, so, everything just goes so quick. Even the things I liked are gone in a flash. But now Star Destroyers have Death Star guns oh. on them. So wait. <laughs> Since roughly the Return of the Jedi era, because uh -huh. those, those are the, 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 the age of those Star Destroyers, uh, he was conjuring them, it said. He's been, he's been working on this on that Sith planet for 30 years. At, at least. Yes. So... And then all the people that live, I guess there weren't red, there were red stormtroopers, but it, they didn't have Sith powers. They were just- Even though they're called Sith troopers, they, I guess they, they worked loyal. for the Sith. So. It was not part of the First Order. Yeah. Uh, or even, I guess even the Empire, but they were just, oh, but, but didn't they look like First Order stormtroopers? Yes. Wouldn't they look like classics? Don't think about it. If the <laughs> Star Destroyers- They're in the movie for five seconds, it doesn't matter. Shh, we gotta move on. <laughs> we, we, we gotta move on, there's other things but, we gotta- but, 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 but if the Star Destroyers, <laughs> Look like classic Star Destroyers. Wait, now Ray has to go to this planet oh, to get no, this sorry. thing. Here's a here's a magical <laughs> space coin that will grant you access to the the supreme leader's Star Destroyer. But anyway, look at these horses. <laughs> so wait, almost an ent entire more than a, a generation of of human beings lived and worked aboard. Star Destroyers basically hovering in formation. No, because they came up from the ground at the start of the movie. So they, they were, were underground. all underground. Did he conjure those people with Sith powers or Sith magic? Or were they just living and working on Star Destroyers? I'm going to assume they were living and working on Star Destroyers. He just had his loyalist faction on that planet hidden away and no one else knew about it. That's what I'm assuming, but I could easily be wrong because it's not explained because we gotta get through it. We gotta get through were it. Were all the people in the hoods in the in the giant arena at the end, were those people? I thought they were the embodiments of the thousands of dead that's, Sith that had come before. That was that's my- That's how I interpreted it. That was my that. interpretation, but I don't fucking know. Yeah. I thought they were all like an illusion. Well, it's the same thing. Same, yeah, yeah, same basic someone, thing. Yeah. Some character at some point said Palpatine was conjuring Star Destroyers, meaning they weren't being built in a giant space factory or just ships. willing them into existence? Yes, yeah, slowly with Sith power. That's stupid, but we are talking about Star Wars. Because <laughs> really, because I think that was their, their cut around of, of people asking logical questions like who built the Star Destroyers. In Star Wars, you have the magic of the Jedi, which is very, in real Star Wars, right? The original Okay, yeah, yeah. You have the magic of the Jedi, that are, that's always so like, kind of like low key. Subtle. There, subtle. And then you had the nuts and bolts kind of real world stuff, the, the X-Wings and the Star Destroyers that would break down, droids, things like that. And in this, they, they've merged them because who, you know, you sit there and you ask who built, these are actual machines, they're actual spaceships, like, who built them? There's, there's, there's 10,000 of them. W who is building them and how does this go unnoticed? See, it's Star Wars and none of that is important. And that's kind of why I hate Star Wars. Well, yeah, I mean, this is like the nail in the coffin mm -hmm. um, as far as, uh, you know, with the exception of, you know, Mandalorian. That's a whole other discussion. Mandalorian, a lovely departure from Star <laughs> Wars. Um, <laughs> A great show. It's not nonstop noise. It's not perfect, but it's great yeah. in comparison to this. Like this is like a shit show. Yeah. The more you think about it, and I think like you know those tweets that we read at the beginning of this are people coming out They're of this overwhelmed by stimulation. Stimulation yeah. that you're there at the premiere and everyone's excited and oh my and gosh, you're seeing emotions. things you know, seeing things. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of a lot of reviews were saying like fan service, and this wasn't very fan servicey to me. I mean, it's it's building on things. It's reintroducing things from the other movies. Like Lando shows up; he's yeah. completely useless. Yeah. Um, I was really distracted during the big end battle, not just from the fact that things were flying in every direction and there was no sense of geography, but like everyone's taking it so seriously. And then they cut to senile Lando, and he's just like laughing because he doesn't know where he is. <laughs> um, I was. I've always been. Uh... 
amazed by the the Oh, Billy D. Williams. Oh, I, Billy D. Williams. I, I, I was like, oh, that's Lando when he had the mask on, you know. Oh, so, sure. Lando, surprise, surprise. It's Lando in disguise. Because he, he was walking. Surprise, surprise. I'm Lando in disguise. Because I think Billy D. Williams. He has a cane. He can yeah. barely walk. So it's yeah. like, he's like, hey, guys, come out and run. Get on, get on this thing. And, yeah. like, and then, he, and you know, he's got a little bar stool under him. And he's like, ah, I'm kind <laughs> of saying. So I was like, oh, that's Lando. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah. the worst in terms of fan service, as far as like something that took me right out of the movie, was at the end when Maz Kanata gives Chewbacca his, his uh, uh, the medal after 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> Chewie. This is for you. <laughs> why why does she have it why would she give it to him at this moment it, it was it's for the audience's sake it got lost in the mail she found it in the same spot she found uh, luke's lightsaber oh from yeah Vespa. but that's a story for another time <laughs> that we never got to nope well yeah yeah Miles Kanata had Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. The janitor found it. It's fine. It's a story for another time. It was in her mystery box. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. How was that uh, as a fuck you to Ryan Johnson when Luke Skywalker shows up in this? And she, uh, Ray tries to oh, throw yeah. her lightsaber away and he catches it. He's like, this is the most fucking important thing ever. And he looked right at the camera and flipped off Ryan Johnson. <laughs> You guys, <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Watching the whole thing together, I freaked. Yeah, and I freaked out. Cause I'm like, this doesn't track. You can't, you can't, you can't follow what's happening. You can't follow what the big stakes are. I got really scared. Well, Luke had a change of heart since he died, right? He became one with the Force, and now he's a little more, he's a little more chill. He's less, like, bitter and, and cynical as he was in Jedi. I, the, you always said, Last Jedi, the Luke Skywalker yeah. storyline, that he's, he's, you know... It's the most interesting idea that movie has. And everybody hates it. They ruined Luke Skywalker. I still think you could have made a good arc out of it. You, you still could have gotten to a point where he's accepted just, the Force just, again. The but it's a character arc, and you get to that point in, like, the third movie. Yeah, and... just the fact that he acknowledges something that was unintentionally made clear in the prequels, which is that the Jedi are kind of awful. Like, the fact that he mentions that in The Last Jedi is like, okay, that's interesting. But now it doesn't matter. Here, Ray, have your lightsaber again. They just left him in a really poor position. Yeah. And I think a lot of, a lot of little slights at Ryan Johnson in this. The oh, yeah. smoke in a tank for sure was one. <laughs> the lightsaber bit. <laughs> well, well, Ryan Johnson didn't create Snoke, though. He just killed him. Right. That's well, because, yeah, because nothing matters. That was the, yeah. the, 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 the driving force of that movie. Yeah. Ray's parents are nobody. Uh, Snoke doesn't matter. All these things that were set up in the last movie don't matter. So yeah, then what do you do after that? He was, he was trying so hard. You, you scramble and you make a movie that feels rushed because you're trying to introduce a bunch of shit yeah. and have it pay off. It's, and it's overcompensating too. Because all you gotta do is, if, if that's your plan, is to like, okay, let's fix all these things that everybody hated about The Last Jedi. You could do that without shoving 15 other story ideas into it. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the, the idea that Rey, okay, Rey is Palpatine's granddaughter, right? The whole time she thought, I don't know, maybe they, they should have thrown some clues like, no, maybe you're a part of a Skywalker family, you know? Well, if, if somebody smart were, were in charge from the beginning and planned this out, maybe you could have done that. No, no, that. I'm, saying, I'm saying from Last Jedi, okay. you're starting with this movie, right? Yeah, yeah. You could do that. You could, you could play with that Ray backstory a little, mold it, change it a little differently. But what Jay is saying, and is what I agree with, is w w the entire cast, other than Ray... Palpatine, mm. uh, Kylo Ren, and maybe Leia to a, a certain extent are all completely useless. Uh, Finn and Poe and Rose and C-3PO and Chewbacca, yes. Lando, everyone's useless. They're given the bulk of the story, which is to 
also tr to track down some guy who was sent to kill Ray's parents because he might have the wayfinder, which could lead. That's we what got, Luke we gotta, was searching for to get to the thing. The thing we got to go get a thing to f that'll tell us how to find a thing that'll take us to another thing. And and Palpatine didn't need ten thousand starships to blow up every planet and like all that shit was in there. So then they could have a space battle. And you could have you had two and a half, half hours to to flesh out. This convoluted, because there's that little scene where Ray and, Ray and uh, Kylo were talking, and he's like, "What well, I did before about your parents." Oh was, yeah, the scene where they're kind of forced yeah, talking yes. again. And she sees the Vader helmet and stuff like that. That was good, yeah. you know, like. Um, but the whole Star Destroyer confrontation. Yes. Yeah. Um, have a handful of scenes like that, and one or two little action scenes that are, you know, remember when they went to the Burning Man festival? <laughs> I, I mean, what was that? <laughs> That was where they had to go to get the thing that would tell them where the other thing was. Yeah, the, and there were the, so many, like, we got to get the thing to get the thing to get yeah. the thing. And it's like, and all of that just just confused the whole storyline and, and the whole emotional stuff. Ky the, 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 Kylo killing Han Solo, his relationship with Leia, his... his He's still wavering between if he's good or bad. Yeah. Ray is also kind of not sure who she is, whether or not she she's failing at her Jedi training. Remember, she couldn't hit the ball, mm -hmm. and then she had to hit the ball with her spear. I always thought the 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 end of that spear looked like a lightsaber. Turns out it was. That's great. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, so the, she pulled her lightsaber out of the, the, the yeah. I didn't of, notice that. I've always thought I didn't that notice it looked that. like a lightsaber on the tip of that spear. It really does. Huh. The whole ending of this movie, like, I had no sense of where anyone was. Everyone's just flying, and there's 5,000 Star Destroyers. And then we cut to Palpatine, and, and it's just flashing just light. And the one for some reason. Yeah. That's the other thing, too, and that's another, like, just 80-yard line. They, they blow up that one, and then there's, like, some line of dialogue about how, like, everyone in the entire galaxy is now, take, is now destroying all the other Star Destroyers. For some reason, and I don't understand this at all, None of the Star Destroyers could leave the Sith planet. Right. You know, here's why. Unless, <laughs> unless they had the navigational beacon from the other Star Destroyer. Yeah. They, they can't just say, point at a, their ship at a star and just go that way. They're just stuck there. I don't know why. They were all interlinked because it was hard. Poe had a line about it. Of course he did. One line, right? And it was, they can't all leave the planet because the navigation's too hard. Just, you just turn your back to the planet and start going in a direction. Although all their ships came to the planet and left at the end without any problem. <laughs> Didn't they? Yeah, Who? Uh, yeah. Who are we talking about now? All the, the, the giant fleet of all the ships from all over the universe oh, all came yeah. at the end, but they all fought in the battle in the planet, but then they also just left Yeah. at the end. Mm -hmm. So they didn't need a navigational beacon. But remember, they, they, they were gonna blow up that navigational beacon and then the bad guy, General Pride was on to him, and so they switched it to the main control, main ship. Yeah. And then they just shot a gun at the main ship and blew it up. Couldn't they, couldn't, once they know they're gonna get blown up, can't they just switch it to a different ship? Can't they switch it to like eight different ships? Oh, oh, switch it to each individual ship. <laughs> there you go. Um, we, we, we haven't gotten all the navigational beacons in stock yet. <laughs> They're on order. He hasn't willed them into existence yet. <laughs> yeah, he's still working on that. Why did you wait? Why didn't you do that first, Palpatine? It takes him like like a year of, of dedicated concentration with Sith magic to will a star destroyer. <laughs> oh, Palpy? Can we just talk about Palpatine? The part that made me laugh the hardest was when he just shot his Force lightning up into space, and it flew everywhere. It's such a shame, too, because there's like a couple moments early on in this movie where the two of them are interacting, and it's like, these guys are great together. And then, like, Adam Driver's great, like, uh, Richard E. Grant, who is General Pride or whatever Pride, he's a great actor. And it's all just in service of nothing. We don't know much about General Pride. No, just mean and evil, incarnate. Never smile once. Like all these good actors. That's why they, they go off and do movies like Marriage Story. That's true. In between doing big Disney films. Adam Driver, Star Wars pays for his mansion, you know. <laughs> Marriage Story pays for his coffee. <laughs> Did anyone notice, because I've generally liked Daisy Ridley in these movies, but in this one, she seems checked out. 
There's a part when she's on the, the ruins of the uh, she's Death Star. Been, she's been getting hate for how long has it been now? That's true. It could be Six some of years? that. Yeah. yeah. Her character is Mary Sue, so I hate her as a human being. But there's a part when she's on the uh, uh, the ruins of the Death Star, and there's that moment where she's fighting the dark version of herself, you know, and the dark version has the double-sided lightsaber or whatever. She looks like she's laughing. She looks like she's holding back laughing when she pulls out that red lightsaber. It's like she doesn't care anymore, I think does they, she? I think they said, have a devilish grin. That, that didn't come across and, and, at all. Yeah, it came off as, as her thinking this whole thing was a farce. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's true, but um, no, yeah, she, uh, uh, I mean, I think in the very first movie, you know, she's a relatively unknown actress in the first movie, so she was giving it her darndest, yeah. but yeah, you're probably right. She's done. She's over this shit. Well, that was something, too, that came out recently, right? Like, in interviews where all these main actors were saying, like, they're done with Star Wars after this. Finn was like, I don't want to be Disney Plus or something like that. What would it take to get you to come back? to do Finn again. In what? I mean, I don't know if Finn is- well, You ain't gonna Disney plus me. <laughs> I ain't getting no Disney plus. How did Ray know where that little farmhouse was? <laughs> She's just there. <laughs> she found it on Google Maps. It's in Tunisia. Don't think about it, it's emotional. It's emotional, Jay. The force, the force. The force. Oh, the force. The force, force emotions, force emotions. <laughs> Remember, Leia and, Leia and Luke's ghosts were hanging out there, so they guided her. Oh, okay, that's fair. And why was that random old lady just in the middle of fucking nowhere? So that she could say the line, oh. my Ray Skywalker. She just, I, I'm just a Skywalker now. I've just decided it. She's, they, they made her old because she's wandering around the desert. She goes, that's her path. To, to go shopping and come back to her house. She goes past the old, the old Skywalker, or the, I'm sorry, uh, Lars Homestead, uh, many times, many times. I'm shocked that wasn't a callback to somebody. There's very few characters it could be. What's Watto? <laughs> <laughs> Super elderly Watto. <laughs> It could have been that, that super old lady who, who said, my bones are aching, Annie, there's a storm <laughs> coming. Do you remember her? No. You don't? I don't remember. I, I my seen... bones are aching, is that what she says? She warns them of the dust storm that's coming. Okay. Oh, my bones are aching. Storm's coming up, Annie. You better get home quick. So raise a Skywalker yes. because she just decided to be. Well, I know thematically fine. what they're doing, but it's just like she chose. She chose the lightness over the dark. Yeah, the Skywalkers are all it that exists. Very, it got very Jedi at the end, you know. Join me. Uh, oh, where it's like anticlimactic and not very good. Yeah. No, Je Return they, of the Jedi. They just blatantly redid the throne room scene yeah. from Return of the Jedi because they, they, he opens up the ceiling so that she could see the space battle. Yeah. You know, friends are yeah. going to die and. You know, and just with lots more strobe lights. Yes, yes. And uh, join me. Eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that was the more interesting stuff in the movie. Everything every other character did was boring. Remember the magic space dagger? <laughs> oh, God, that disappeared. Oh, yeah. No, well, that guided them to the wreckage of the Death Star. And then I guess it's not important after that, right? No, remember, she held the dagger up and the little thing came out? Yeah. And she held it up. And it made the okay. shape of it. It was like the Goonies. I guess, that it just, the... I guess it just wasn't important after that, yeah. yeah. It was to help her find where the Wayfinder is, the, the little Borg cube, uh, Borg thing. Yeah. It looked like a Borg n nodule thing that's on the Borg ship. I was at a dagger. I was waiting for her to have to stab Palpatine with it. That was probably in the... Like one of the edits, one of the re. Magic yeah. yeah, yeah. There's things like that, like at the end when Lando, that that uh, that girl sits next to him. Yeah. I thought there was going to be like revealed that that's his daughter or something. I kind of feel like maybe that's something that was in. I'm assuming edit. that's just we don't have time. I, it's possible. Why something. even put that in the movie then? Why have Lando meet this random character? Why why have Poe's old flame show up? Why have that random character at all? Why have the horses? Yeah, I, yeah. There's so much it should have just been cut out. So the magical space dagger, where did that get found? That got found on the the, uh, the planet with all the rave dancers. After right? they got sucked down into the beads, did yeah. they find it? That whole section of the movie felt like more Indiana Jones yeah, to yeah, me yeah. than anything else. Her, her There's quicksand and then there are underground tunnels yes, and, the underground and tunnel. uh, there, there bones. Are some archeological and, stuff. Yeah. Even, even her holding the dagger up with the ch -ch 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 yeah. felt like him putting the staff of, of Ra in the, in the hole. Yeah. 
and the sun shines through the thing. And when was that dagger made? It had Sith runes on it. It knew to line up with the crashed remains of the Death Star. <laughs> and it's got ancient Sith runes on it. The Force, Rich. Force. Oh, the Force. It's not sloppy writing. It's, <laughs> it's the Force. The little, the little that comes out like alters its, its shape. But the, the grooves on the dagger lined up with the wreckage on the Death Star. In the future, it knew the future. Yeah, the force. Yeah, force. the force. force. Oh, that's so dumb. <laughs> but that that dagger, C three PO interpreted it because he wasn't programming didn't allow him to speak Sith language. That's why they had to go to the World War II village. Yes. They had to wipe his memory, which someone thought that was funnier than it was him not them wiping his memory. No, they wanted to give C three PO a heroic moment. That was his sacrifice yeah, for but the then greater after that, Then there's so many jokes about him yeah. not knowing, not remembering anything. And there, I, one of the, when I was editing our last video, I was watching an interview with um, Anthony Daniels. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, he said he constantly tried to get George Lucas to give C-3PO some kind of moment. Oh. And it was like, how about C-3PO does this? I tried to give him a little humanity. <laughs> he and, and George's response was always, he's always scared. <laughs> and then he would come up to George Lucas again, and um, you know, George, here's a moment where C-3PO could save the day. And, no, he's always scared. That moment in like, this, it's it's great listening to. Him. I don't particularly like Anthony Daniels, and he's kind he's of a little arrogant. Himself. Yeah, but um, that when he tells that story, George Lucas just shut him down every time. He's always scared. Shut up. And then he eventually gave up. So that was probably Anthony Daniels, yeah, his yeah. ego pushing up. I got to do something heroic in my final film as the world's greatest character ever invented, because <laughs> I play him. Um, that moment too, and it was in the trailer where uh, they're about to wipe his memory, and he's like, I'm saying, uh, looking at my friends for one last time. Friends that hate you. Yeah, well that's the thing, in the trailer, I was like, I'm, I'm assuming out of context in the trailer that this is, they're, they're pulling memories of him with like Luke and Leia and Han from when he was younger. Oh, yeah. oh no, but he's talking about these new characters that he barely knows. That, that hate him. That hate him. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so C-3PO interprets the, the language on the dagger and it says to go to Endor, the moon, e of, e the moon, or, the moon of Endor. Yeah. It's not Endor. I guess it, it did, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The moon of Endor. Okay. Um, Endor is a forest moon. And I think the Endor system is a bunch of planets because yeah. they show several planets. They're not on the Ewok planet. No, yeah. that's, yeah. I don't think so. No, well, we see that at the very end. Yeah. We get a little Wicket cameo. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, so I guess it crash landed on a different planet, even though it was in orbit of Endor. J.J. J. J. Abrams doesn't, he doesn't like space. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't want to understand space. See, I just assumed, like you did, when we talked about this, when the Death Star wreckage crashed on Endor, it obliterated the forest yeah. for decades. Yeah. And so that's why it was all kind of like flat know, flat and dead grass and stuff. So I really don't know. It was on, but, but basically the knife, the magical Sith dagger said to go there to find one of the little triangles. You need a MacGuffin to find a MacGuffin. There are several MacGuffins and that's the Sith Wayfinder, which looks like a Borg device to me. Uh, it's glowing green and it's like a physical device, yeah. which is, so weird that the Sith would need like a- For an ancient yes. magical- uh, Yes. Yeah. It's like, if you're a Sith or you're in tune with the dark side of the force, the, the story logic would just assume that you'd be led there. You know what? I'm just, I'm just delighted when Star Wars ever decides not to resort to space magic. So <laughs> I'm fine right, with it. All right, all um, right. But yeah, so the Emperor had one on the Death Star in his little closet because he was a clone of an ancient being known as Palpatine. He should have changed his name when he became chancellor and took over the galaxy. He should have called himself like, like Bob Smith or something. <laughs> assuming, assuming your clone theory is what happened, we still don't know. We're not really sure. Everything happened so fast. I still think it might be his corpse from, well, at least his charred body from the, the, the Death Star explosion. He landed on his fingers? Is that, <laughs> is that what you're saying? Well, he, he, he fell fingers first. When I, he, he I broke like, a nail. He was, he was falling into the core, and then when it blew up, that pushed him like away, and that's, that's why he survived. He flew out of space. He window. flew out into space ah! after that. He was shooting lightning so furiously, it burned all of his fingers down to like nails. Yeah, okay. yeah. The heart of the original movies is those characters and the, uh, even though I don't love Return of the Jedi, all the stuff with Luke and the Emperor and Vader is great. 
it's emotional, and this is just... This is, this is so similar to Return of the Jedi, because Return of the Jedi, while good, has its flaws, and yeah. its flaws come in the second and third act. The opening, fine, Jabba, we gotta rescue Han, a little adventure. Uh, and then after that, they had nothing to do with the characters, other than Luke. Yeah. Leia becomes a basic, like, ground troop person. And Han is there also. And Han is there also. And their, their epic love romance is now just them. We gotta break into this bunker. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the, 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 the idea of a, a second Death Star is goofy, and we have nothing for Han and Leia and C-3PO and Chewbacca and R2-D2 to do. Yeah. Except for do all these things on the Ewok planet. And that's essentially this movie. We have nothing for Finn, Poe, Rose, C-3PO, R2-D2, BB-8, Eeyore? <laughs> Who? Or Igor? Well, they're still yeah, they're, they're they have nothing for those characters to do, and they're still introducing new characters. Yes, <laughs> so presumably so J.J. Abrams can pay his friends. Yes, I, <laughs> yes they add they add, well, they add the the lady who rides around on a horse, ex stormtrooper. Her name was like I don't know. Zana. Oh yeah, Zana or Lana or. I know that because I had to buy her action figure. Okay, Zana. It's not Zana, is it? Then the two new characters in this are Zana and Zori. I think so. Really. Someone's getting lazy. Maybe one's, <laughs> maybe one's Yanni. <laughs> that would be a shock if Yanni showed up in this film. Remember I thought that they went to that Smuggler Cove planet to meet Zori Bliss, the bounty hunter, because she had components for the time travel machine. Oh. Yeah. I, I would have wholeheartedly welcomed time travel into this film. Yeah. Instead of, we gotta go to the place to get the thing that will lead us to the other thing. It would have made for a bigger mess. Uh, yeah. I would have welcomed a bigger mess. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say the final act of this movie is a pretty big mess, just visually, viscerally. That's when it got kind of like fun schlock to me, where it was just like nonsense, and the Emperor's hamming it up. Yeah, his the, Ian McDermott's performance is always He's always, always great. Always great, it's always a joy. Uh, if he was a little more comical, I would have enjoyed it more. It wouldn't have fit the tone no. properly. because They definitely went for a satanic Palpatine. I, yes, they definitely. I like the atmosphere of that whole place he was in, too. How, like, dark and moody it was. But I guess I figured that wasn't enough, so then they turned on the strobe lights. Yeah, but it was basically a Jedi ending. Our, the rest of our characters are doing a thing to destroy a thing, right? Yeah. they got to take down the shield generator, and they need the Ewoks' help, and the battle starts, and then Luke is confronting the Emperor. Ray is confronting the Emperor. They got the, the, technically they even have like the ground battle segment when they have to storm the top of the Star yeah. Destroyer. Mm -hmm. yeah. With, with um, not, not primitives, but. Um, they got horses. They got horses. So there's that element, that not non-technological element. They're just yeah. Yeah, people that are riding around on horses and living off the land because they're former stormtroopers. So, they're, uh, yeah, so there's an Ewoki thing going on there. That J.J. Abrams. Rich, you he said knows it. how to remake other people's movies. Yeah. You said it a million times. Star Wars is... Creatively bankrupt. Wait a minute. Finn, early on in this movie, says, Ray, I have to tell you something, when they think they're going to die. And then he never tells her. I think... I don't know. I don't know why they left it in the movie, but I'm assuming they were going for like a love plot. Like, sure. He, he well, that's his her. whole thing. Is like in the first two movies, yeah, he's always concerned about where's Ray, what's happening to Ray, how's Ray. But, but if, you're, if you're not gonna have a payoff, if you're for not that, gonna pay off, just, just cut it cut out. that out. Yes. I mean, they ran out of time, Rich. The movie's coming out in two days. We gotta just stop <laughs> editing. Was there so much in the movie that they just couldn't edit? They couldn't edit it properly. They... And that's some of the stories. They're saying that yeah, there's just lots of different edits and re-edits of this movie. So. Who knows? He's trying to tell her that he's gay. So we can have our first gay Star Wars character, Jay. We have that in this movie, though. There, there is. Two, two out of focus females in the background kiss. So progressive. <laughs> Way to go, Disney. It was that old lady. It was that old the lady, the bird nose. lady. Yeah, yeah the bird yeah. lady. She, she guess, was a lesbian. So how progressive. Wasn't a main character. They, they wrote off Poe as not being gay because he did that thing where he's like, hey, Carrie Russell. He's like, eh? And then, and then she Did goes. Did you see that? Yes. Yeah. Oh. We, were your eyes closed during the film? <laughs> At the end, she had still, to take a mental break. She's still wearing her stupid helmet because it's not actually Carrie Russell. <laughs> uh, uh, she's in one scene where her eyes. I think her and her and J.J. Abrams had a joke. <laughs> like, uh, they said, "We're gonna tell people you're in the movie." How, no, no, no. How little can you be in this movie 
and how much money from the back end can you make? <laughs> And it's, it's like a private joke. They see your eyes for five seconds. Yeah. And the rest of the time, it's just a, like, and she did she did her voiceover in like the sound booth for like an afternoon. Uh, so she she was on camera, her eyes for, for 10 seconds. And then she was in the sound sound studio for half a day, right? And uh, now she's going to make $10 million. Ten, yes, yeah, uh, at least a couple million. <laughs> um, and uh, and she had a body double, like in her Zori Bliss costume. That's she never else. took her helmet off. Yeah. But yeah. at the end, she, she's like, you don't even see her face. And Poe is like, huh? Hmm? 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 He's doing like a, how about you and I? Like yeah. He started doing this, which was, I thought was weird for Star Wars. <laughs> he, he, um, it was implied that they were might have been a thing way back when. And then she goes, mm, mm, and he goes, mm, and then he walks out of frame. That was got a case of the not gay. Yeah. Just and, make Poe and Finn gay. Make them super gay. Why the fuck not? That's how they come across in this movie. Just do it. <laughs> there was some interview with J.J. Abrams where he was like doing that like wishy-washy. Like, they, I yeah. mean, maybe they could be. Uh, we're Disney. We're progressive. Except not really. We just want to get the illusion. They're so phony. Is, is, is this a new term? Passive progressive? <laughs> it's like a play on passive aggressive. Because do you remember, remember progressive. what's it, Josh Gad's like minor character? In Beauty that? and the Beast, yeah. yeah. He's a sporting character. He's gay. You see him dancing with a guy in one shot. Look how progressive we are. We wouldn't do it with the main character. <laughs> Can you imagine Finn and Poe like like kissing? Like, I, I mean, like, I wouldn't care. A, a majority of people wouldn't care, but it, it would be... It would be a thing. If they did that, then Star Wars fans would complain about it on the internet. Some Star Wars fans. And they don't complain about anything on the internet no, now. No, half so. of them would complain, half of them would champion it. Yeah. Because we're, we're in like split down the middle politics Everything. With, uh, yeah. with Star Wars. Um, but yeah, Finn is not in love with Rose. Yeah. Because remember, he's like, she's like, I want to come with you. He's like, no, 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 stay back. And then he, he pats her on the shoulder. He's like, do you remember that? He's like, yeah. stay back, buddy. She's, she's clearly in the friend zone. Yeah. She's, she's been put in the friend zone, even though she smooched him yeah. in The Last Jedi. Disney's market research says they don't want you in this much of the film. You stay here. And she, she basically almost killed herself to save him. Like, <laughs> and then he, he gives her, for that, she gets a pat on the shoulder and stay back here, buddy. <laughs> Yes. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Finn and Rey had good chemistry on screen. They shouldn't have spent the entirety of The Last Jedi apart. I think Poe and Finn are good together, too. Like the yeah. scene oh, in yeah. uh, The Force Awakens when they're escaping. Uh, they get in the, the TIE fighter or whatever, and they're trying to escape. Like, those two are good together. And then they're separate for the entire rest of that movie and yeah. all of the next movie. They got, they got like a little buddy cop vibe going. Yeah. And one's a little more anal retentive, and one's a little more like loose, loosey, hotshot kind of yeah. guy. Regardless of whatever flaws the movies had, those characters or actors do have good chemistry together. They, it they ma shouldn't. It makes you wish they were in a real movie. It, yeah. Yeah. My personal opinion, all of Star Wars is just a fluke. You gotta take it a little easy, Luke. <laughs> you may be the hottest bush pilot this side of Moss Eisley, but uh, those little skyhoppers are dangerous. <laughs> Keep it up, one day whammo. You're gonna end up a dark spot on the downside of a canyon wall. It's all uh, oh, the, yeah. the Empire. The Empire Strikes Back is the linchpin that is holding this of house course. of cards together. Mm -hmm. The first one was a, a disastrous film until editing, Marsha Lucas and and editing and breakthrough special effects saved it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and and music, yeah. And John Williams' score. It was it was like a perfect storm, and George Lucas was you know he was he was the second luckiest man in show business after Ringo Starr. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got this uh, space space thing with some. There's a monster or you something. You say yeah, hundreds of towns and people make this work. <laughs> you say you say the second luckiest. George Lucas sold Star Wars for four billion dollars, motherfucker. Oh, all right, all right. And, and let's also, very briefly, to close out our review, address um, the people, the comments that say, will now do the prequels look so bad? No, uh, yeah, they do. Yeah. They're not better because these new ones aren't great. Right. <laughs> it doesn't somehow make the prequels better. Prequels still are bad. <laughs> like, literally none of the characters in the prequels are likable. Or interesting. And, and the stories all... make no sense. And the, everything about those movies. And that's the thing with this. Like, it, they look great. The effects are great. The, the actors are good. 
and it's just, yeah, it's the stories that's lacking. I will say at least the prequels are fun to make fun of. There's so many baffling, weird things in them, and these new movies are just so bland and kind of forgettable. A, a, a nice blend would have been having some of Lucas's ideas in this new trilogy. I know he was talking about like the, the wills and the, the force and all this, like he's- It's uh, more George Lucas weirdness, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're like, no, we don't want your ideas. You know, they're too weird. Um, and, but blending that and kind of mixing that with some modern day talent and kind of figuring out a new way to go, th they really need to plan this stuff out. What do you do with Star Wars now? Where do you go? There's a whole bunch of high paid people asking themselves this question right now <laughs> as, they, as they watch the, the reviews come in. <laughs> the, the, the men they sound a little more panicked than you though. It's just thinks it's out of gas, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's very hard to nail down exactly what to do with Star Wars. I think the Mandalorian's on the right track mm -hmm. um, in terms of just scaling things back. Like that episode where they're on the space station, so simple. It's just four, it's five characters total. It's like five. one hallway set. <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> to see the contrast between that yeah. and then this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I feel like I'm being smacked in the face by this movie. Are we doing recommendations? Uh, no. No, we're not doing them, or no, you wouldn't recommend it. Well, not if you're if you're prone to seizures. <laughs> there was a sign outside the theater that said that. Yeah, I, yeah. That's a thing. Maybe maybe wait for it to come out, uh, and and like stream it, but like turn the speed of the movie down to like like one quarter speed. You're like, oh, <laughs> fuck! I'm not gonna have a. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna have, have a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new option by Netflix, to so watch your movie at 25% speed. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're having a heart attack from Star Wars? Here's a magical space coin. <laughs> this will grant you access to any Star Destroyer. Oh, that's what that was. <laughs> I'm giving this to you, Poe, for use in scene 312. <laughs> How did the ship get aboard? Right, I heard you chuckle. Um, oh yeah. The guy comes in there and he's like, "This is a rusty spaceship that they just left on." They just they just completely cut out how they got on board the Star Destroyer. Like, why nobody noticed this rickety old ship landing, <laughs> and our characters getting off the ship? No, you know? Rich. Wrong. Two stormtroopers walked up, and they said, "Show us your identification." And they shot him. Did that really happen? Yeah. I, I you oh, know what, this, this every, no seriously. It happened so fast. It happened yeah. so fast, I did not notice. It was not like, uh, do you remember, what, do you remember Star Wars? Do you no. Do you remember so, oh, yeah, when they Star landed Wars. the Millennium Falcon, the Millennium Falcon got tractor beamed into the Death Star, and then they, they hit under the things. And waited and then... for like two hours, and then two, they <laughs> scanned the ship, and then they- It's like a, like a scene? Yeah. Like a constructed scene well, it was, the point? Yeah, the, yeah, they were infiltrating the Death Star, and they had to be very fucking careful not to get well, then caught. The guys go in with the equipment, and yes. then you hear the noises. Hey, can you give us a hand down here? <laughs> The stormtroopers go up to find out what was that noise. Then they steal their costumes. Then they do this whole thing where they have Chewbacca as their prisoner. They come down, they pretend the, yeah, the communicator's not working. TK-421, why aren't you responding? And uh, yeah, uh, TK-421 has a problem with this trans. Oh my God, it's Chewbacca, he's murdering me. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have this whole plan, this. Or you just have somebody say, how'd the ship get on here? That's, that's the perfect scene comparison because it's basically the same scene. Yeah. Where there's two stormtroopers and they just come out guns blazing and murder them in this giant hangar bay where there are windows everywhere, <laughs> security cameras. The scene's 30 seconds long as opposed to five minutes. Oh, it yeah. was like eight seconds, Jay. <laughs> ha and then they just run out. Yeah. And it's just like a storm, and they're just shooting everyone in the hallways. Yeah, they run down the hallway and they shoot a bunch of people, and then two stormtroopers come up to him, and Ray just uses the force. Yes. So why don't you just do that with all of them? Are you going to recommend Rise of Skywalkers? No, but I am going to p point out that this, this this entire trilogy has just been a waste of potential. Yes. Adam Driver's great. Mm -hmm. I I like. I know everyone hates Ray. I still like the main cast. I just don't think they ever did anything really interesting with them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Was it succinctly said? Well said, Jay. Uh, no, I would not. 
I, I think, yeah, I think this is the worst one. I think I like The Last Jedi more than this, and I don't really like The Last Jedi either. No, at least The Last Jedi took its time. Yeah. It's nice and slow. Yeah, this movie was just so exhausting and not in a fun, like, ooh, it's so action-packed kind of way. I'm just like, I'm done with Star Wars. As, as are a lot of people. It's, it's... Now, let's talk about The Mandalorian. <laughs> Can I give my recommendation, Jay? Absolutely. No! <laughs> No, I, I, I echo the sentiments of Rich yeah. almost exactly. Uh, the cast is good. Some, some ideas are okay, but overall it's a clusterfuck. And I think that's what a lot of people are saying. Is it has good parts? Did it leave me in tears? No. I don't want to say if you legitimately like this film, you have a low IQ, but if you legitimately like this film, you have a low IQ. <laughs> Because you are you are watching all the things happen so fast, and and the critical part of your brain that that kicks in, that's supposed to kick in. It doesn't have wait, time to. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It keeps keeps going by, going yeah. by. It's like being on a like some kind of roller coaster ride where you can't even process. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just all the, the undulations and the speed, and then at the end, hey, I think that was fun. Yeah. You, I heard the John Williams score. Yeah. It's, I, I, it's like you're on the, the, the little cart going through the haunted house, but none of the scares are very spooky, so they just have the car go by really fast. <laughs> 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 well, was that a monster? Oh, was, was that a, a, a what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think was the saddest part, too? Uh, for, uh, forgettable. The, the score was... was for being an exclusive John Williams score was forgettable. Yeah. Except for the the moments where you're supposed to remember mm -hmm. things when they would bring up the old Oh music. yeah, Leia's theme and yes. all that stuff. Uh, certain, like when she walks into the Death Star's throne room, you get that. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Yeah. Uh, um, and so the old stings that would come in throughout the, with the rest of Yeah. Ray has a theme. I like her theme. What is her theme? Do, 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 do. It's very whimsical. It's different than okay. the other stuff. So. <laughs> hey, it's something from the series this that is I remember. News to me. <laughs> it's news to me. <laughs> Ray's theme. What the fuck are you talking about? Are you Ray's theme from Ghostbusters? Does Ray have a theme? Ray Parker Jr.'s theme. Ray, from oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a great theme. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> they, they remake, they're going to re, re, remake that song for the new movie. When there's something stranger things they did that for in the neighborhood, <laughs> who are you going to call? Finn Wolfhard. And maybe the girl who was in Godzilla. But if they were both in Ghostbusters, it'd be too obvious. What's her name? Uh, Billy Bobby Brown? Billy, Bro Billy Bobby Brown. Millie Bobby Brown. Bill Millie Bobby Brown. <laughs> Which is funny because Bobby Brown did a song for Ghostbusters too. It all ties it together all like the force. <laughs> Remember when I will no longer question logical loopholes in these Star Wars films. Do you remember? Oh, here's another thing that'll blow your mind. Oh, Jay. oh, okay. Bobby Brown's cameo in Ghostbusters 2, he said, hey, can I have one of those proton packs? My kid brother wants one. Hey, you guys got another one of those proton packs? My kid brother really wants one. The proton pack is not a toy. I guess it's right. Then Egon tells him, no, a proton pack is not a toy. Cut to 30 years later, and kids are firing the proton packs. <laughs> it has a gunner seat? The proton pack is not a toy. The proton pack is not a toy. The proton pack is not a toy. Directly against Egon's recommendation, his own fucking granddaughter. <laughs> Paul Rudd will be the kid who gets to use a real proton pack. What? What? The kid, the kid brother, will end up grow up to be Paul Rudd. Bobby Brown is Bobby black. Brown's a black He's man. adopted. It's fine. He's adopted. <laughs> Ooh, swing and miss, Rich. <laughs> Thank you guys all so much. And thank you guys all for being here too. I think we're up here, right?
Are we done? Oh, is it I'm sure not. I quit. I, I quit Star Wars. I'm done. I'm never talking about Star Wars again. Bye. We'll see you when we talk about The Mandalorian. We'll see you when we talk about the Picard series and Ghostbusters 2020 and everything else that's coming out that just continues to, to ruin our, our lives. <laughs> <laughs> We've never addressed our George Lucas bust. Oh, is that who that is? I thought it was Bob Vila. Goodbye, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. I can't do this anymore. There's my microphone. Hey, it's over, though, you know? Mm-hmm. We, don't, we don't have to talk about Star Wars movies for at least a year or two or three. As always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and go see The Rise of Skywalker when it opens in theaters this Friday, December 20th. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Bad Boys of Star Wars out.